Hi, I'm Jay's Two Cents. You might know me from such videos as bad ones on YouTube. <laughs> What? This is Jay's Two Cents. He's going to video about installing Windows 11. No, I'm not. Oh. I'm telling you how to tell Microsoft to go f themselves when it comes to <laughs> making you put in your information. There. There's your intro. <laughs> NZXT's build is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer, and right now they're proud to announce expansion and availability to Australia, the Netherlands, France, and Italy. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator and see exactly how your favorite games will perform. Want to build your own PC but still have the NZXT peace of mind warranty? Then the new BLD Build It Yourself kit has what you want. Buy it and build it yourself and NZXT has you covered. To get started configuring or building your next gaming PC, visit the build link in the description below. If you've tried to install Windows, especially Windows 11 lately, you've probably noticed that you absolutely positively have to put in a Windows user ID which means you have to have one either already existing or create one at the time of installing Windows 11. Windows 10 is similar-ish, but today, you know, we, we did our video that's got, geez, I think like 12 million views now on what to do after building your system, like how to install your drivers, how to install your BIOS, your updates, all that sort of stuff. I figured now we'll show you how to get Windows installed without having to just give them your user ID and stuff. They didn't tell them how to pound sand. Windows 10 is not as bad, because in Windows 10, you can actually click a little button that just says, I don't have internet. And it's like, really, are you sure? And you're like, yeah, I don't have internet. And it's like, okay, here, create a local user. Now, a local user is a user that is stored on the system, on the, the hard drive, the operating system itself. When you install and then use a Microsoft account, what it's doing is it's using the cloud to verify who you are and your, your CD key or your install key and all of that and it allows it to sync you know, cross-platform. Like if you have a couple different computers, you could technically stop working on one and pick up where you left off on another. However, it also allows them to basically just cookie share and advertise to you on all your systems and basically just take all your information for free. Now, a lot of people, like myself included, do not like to use online Microsoft accounts. None of my systems have Microsoft accounts installed at the time of, of like installing my system. I do have Microsoft accounts for things like Microsoft Office, and uh, I don't even use OneDrive or any of that. If you want to use Office or whatever, especially with Office, Office, uh, Office 365, sir, I swear to God, I'm too Office to drive. Anyway, if you have Office 365 or any other Windows suite, then you have to have an, an account for that. But I'm not then sharing that account across all of my systems. So today we're gonna show you how to bypass that. Now to install Windows 11 from scratch, you have to use an install key. Now you can go and create this ISO. We're not gonna tell you how to do that today. We're not gonna tell you where to get it. We're not gonna tell you like, go buy Windows. We're not gonna tell you go bootleg Windows. We're gonna say, we're gonna assume you already have Windows on an install disk. Now this is not gonna be a very long video because this is not very hard to get around. But I think it's important for the more companies really try and just force you into their schemes and don't be fooled. Microsoft is just nothing but one big data mining, data selling scheme. The operating system is just the vessel at which they do it with now. Microsoft is no longer in the business of building operating systems. They are in the business of building data collecting pieces of software. That's all they are. Uh, if you work for them and you're offended, shame on you. You're part of the problem as far as I'm concerned. Moving forward. This is also where all you guys are gonna start bloop, blooping everything down below about Linux this, Linux that, and Linux has its own share of problems. Uh, the reason why we even decided to make this video is because the, the situation at which we are building this system for someone else, direct to Windows 11, because it is an Intel 12th gen CPU, so we're not even going 10 and then to 11, is the fact that I don't have their Windows information, uh, their Microsoft account, I don't have that. And I couldn't just create an offline account and allow them to enter it later on their own. Like you have to put it in in Windows 11. It absolutely positively will not let you continue without a Microsoft account. Let's, let's say why this is a problem. It's rare, but it's possible that you live somewhere where you don't actually have internet. You might live somewhere where you take a laptop or something down to a net cafe and you finally have a desktop and you want to install it at home just to play some offline stuff or whatever the situation may be. I know that sounds very far fetched guys, these are real scenarios that exist in the world today still, where people do not have internet at their home. You cannot install Windows 11 or move forward without it. Second of all, let's say your ISP. I recently, so we had, you know, Ikea for my live stream. You know, Ikaika, we call him Ikea because nobody can say Ikaika. He's Hawaiian. But anyway, I digress, move forward. He was without internet for like three or four days because of a wide, wide 
ISP outage. That would mean if he were in the middle of building a system and he was trying to move past this point, he could not do physically do that until his ISP was up and running. Well, Jay, you could tether to your phone. Okay, fine. You, if you're, if you are that fine with installing Windows and putting your information in, and you're telling me all the reasons how you can get around the ISP being a problem, then this video is clearly not for you. But for those of you that don't want to provide your information, this is, this is, we're showing you how to get around it. But because I don't have this person's information, I couldn't move past it. I wasn't going to put mine in there. So if this is a fresh install, I mean, if you were upgrading, do that. We're doing custom and this is our main drive right here. So that's where we're gonna be installing Windows. Now the, the part at which you tell Microsoft to basically go pound sand happens after it copies all the installation files, after it installs Windows, and it's gonna be right after the getting devices and things ready. Where it says, you know, this will be a few minutes, almost ready, getting there. Um, that's where we have two different methods we can actually utilize here uh, to bypass the Windows user account required step. So we're gonna let this install, which should be pretty quickly. In the time I've been talking, we've already copied 72, 75, 79% of our files. When you install an NVMe on any modern CPU, man, does it go fast. The days of installing Windows and leaving for an hour or two and going and doing something are over, long over, unless you have a hard drive. Then they're still faster, but not this fast. See, it's already installed features and installed updates, and now we're rebooting. That's how fast this was, all in real time. So this is what you'll be greeted with once you, uh, you know, are past the installation phase. Now, uh, something I should have probably mentioned, and hopefully you're watching this video and not doing it as you're watching the video. Don't have your internet plugged in. Don't plug in your internet. I mean, you, could, you still could get past it, but just for good measure, don't have your internet plugged in. Don't have wireless plugged in, like plugged in, you know, your antennas. Just do whatever you can to lock the internet. Put it in a Faraday cage, okay? It's fine. Skip. Let's connect to a network. No. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go Shift F10, because this is the part where Phil and I were like, wait, we can't pass this. See, this is where on Windows 10, you get an option that says, I don't have internet. Because just because there's wireless networks available doesn't mean there are ours. That just means we're in range of them. So if you hit Shift F10, you can bring up a command prompt and you can type T-A-S-K-M-G-R for task manager. So we're gonna go more details. So right here, you'll see a task called network connection flow. If I right click, and end task, who's going to use this device? Before it actually said, oops, it looks like you don't have internet, or oops, it looks like you've lost connection. You see how the moment we killed that task, it went away? Now there's a caveat right here. This is a big asterisk in this part of the video. Every build finds, Microsoft finds some way to circumvent this. The community always finds a way to re-break it. So at the time you're watching this video, you might see something slightly different. Fortunately, uh, right now at the time making this video, based on the ISOs that are available, this fix currently works. But let's say you've accidentally connected, connected your internet and it knows you're connected to ethernet and that right then and there is saying, enter your user ID. Let's just say you got to that point somehow, because right now it says who's gonna use this device. This is us creating a local account. So this is what we want. We're not gonna continue here. We are going to actually, uh, physically restart the system, plug the internet in, and show you how to bypass it at that point. All right, so method number two, we have the internet connected. Ethernet's plugged in, and at this point it's gonna act a little bit differently, because now it's like, oh, we see the internet. Oh yeah, we see the internet, and we're gonna connect your internet to our internet of advertisers and cookies and privacy invasion. Exactly the same as up to before. Now it says checking for updates, so check this out. Now it is actually telling Microsoft, we got a live one, we got a live one here. It's too late at this point. So we're gonna let it do its thing and we'll show you how to get around it next. Gathering advertising data, gathering advertising data. I, I do personally kind of like that it updates at the start, at least some of the major updates. You know, there's still gonna be a ton of updates uh, depending on how out of date your install disk is. That's why we like to keep some of the older ones here because then we can install prior to a lot of the fixes and stuff. So check this out. Microsoft, this is where you used to have, I don't have an account or whatever, or I don't have internet. This is where you could skip it. So no account, create one, no. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, at fake.com. Next, enter password. I don't know, one, 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 one. Sign in. Oops, something went wrong, next. So this isn't going exactly as it was expected. Apparently what Phil found said you have to do it multiple times and then eventually it will like, your account has been locked. And then 
So we just put in a fake one. <laughs> okay, fine. Oh, look at all the spy buttons. Turn off all the spy buttons. You know, we, you need to pay, make sure you read these. I have absolutely no doubt Microsoft at some point might reword this to be like, enable to turn off. <laughs> so you're gonna go through and turn them all on by turning them off. I have no doubt Microsoft will stoop to that point at some day. I still personally like the, uh, the idea of doing the killing the task host for the network because then you're not now, because this account might actually have one, two, three at fake.com somehow associated to it. And then you have to go in and change all that later if you want to. But there's absolutely no reason that you should have this connected. Personally, in my opinion, there is no reason to have multiple systems connected to the very same Microsoft account. Sure, it makes it easy to recover user keys and all that sort of stuff, but you know what? You know how like you're searching for something on your computer or whatever, you just, let's just say you're online and you're reading articles or you look up something on Google. Let's say you looked up like, how hot's it gonna be tomorrow, right? You look up the weather. And then suddenly on your phone, you start getting ads for like awnings and umbrellas. Or you know what's funny? We tested this once uh, near an Amazon device, I won't say the name, where we were like, I need a new vacuum cleaner. We need a new vacuum cleaner. Our vacuum cleaner broke. Like we were just on purposely talking out loud. We need a vacuum cleaner, blah, blah, blah. What ads do you think we immediately started getting like within minutes on our Apple device? Because Apple's listening too, but no, it's because the Amazon app is on our phone and this is the age that we live in. I know someone out there is like, but Jay, you advertise to us. Hey, at least when you come to our video, you know there's an ad that's gonna play. We didn't just pop up on your system and be like, what's up guys, Jay's new sense here, welcome to my video. You know, that'd be awesome, but not really, I guess. So there you go. This video, hopefully it helps someone out there because I'm gonna tell you right now, we were not happy at the fact that we had to, we didn't, we had to go searching for a way around this as well. Hopefully this will make it easier for you guys, all jokes aside. If you are not comfortable with signing in to Windows or Microsoft, to install Windows, then easy workarounds. Kill the network task, or if you've plugged in, instead of restarting for some reason, like your Ethernet's plugged in, just put in a fake username and password, and there you go. In fact, here's your proof right here that it's a local account. See, it's named me, and it says local account and administrator. If it was a online account, I believe it would say Microsoft account. Uh, so it's all local right now. OneDrive has nothing to sign in. Rewards has nothing to sign in. Like all this crap is, is basically just an offline type of account. So there you go, guys. Uh, like I said, we had to find our, we had to find these workarounds ourselves as well. So all we want to do is share the information for those of you out there that I know many of you like me just do not want to sign into Windows to install an operating system. We were expecting it to try and ping the Microsoft servers and say this isn't a real account, and clearly that didn't happen on this build. However, if you do experience that, the workaround is to keep putting it in incorrectly, and then eventually it will say your account is locked. The fake account that doesn't exist apparently is locked and then it gives you the next button to move on. Like they can't physically stop you from using it, but killing the task host seems to be the better option rather than trying to even let it ping the servers and stuff. But there you go. It works. We can all give Microsoft a collective F you while you hopefully give us a collective thumbs up. And maybe a subscribe. Thanks for watching guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.